Hello and welcome to tonight's show. Welcome to another video about paradise and welcome to another video about Mexico. Yeah, it's just me. Welcome to another day and another video about paradise. Welcome to one of the last videos about Mexico. Today I'm going to tell you what you need to know if you plan on traveling to Mexico and why you should go to Mexico. If you haven't seen the playlist yet, you should do that. If you have, you know why I was wearing this mask because I promised to reveal what I bought in that weird little store. It was this mask. If you like and love luchadores, you might recognize this. Now, let's get started. As always, I would like to introduce and start this video with a little disclaimer. And first of which is that this is going to be my personal opinion and my personal experience. To build that, I spent a total of 26 days in Mexico. When we arrived in Cancun, we drove off right away to Playa del Carmen where we spent one day and then we drove further on to Tulum where four days were spent. After that Bacala was two days and then in Merida another two days. After that there was Valladolid with day excursions but the main base was Valladolid for three days and then to the Isla Holbosch for three days, back to Playa del Carmen for another five days and at the end, because we skipped it in the beginning, there was six days in Cancun. So much for the disclaimer, let's get started. First topic of today is going to be transportation and traffic. We rented a scooter for a couple of days in Tulum. That was $25 per day and mainly we did it because I really love to drive around. I love this feeling of freedom and yeah, just be independent and drive around as I like. But the driving itself is a really cool experience and you get to know the traffic a little better than if you just sit in a car, taxi or in a bus. That we only rented the scooter once is a proof of the point that it wasn't really necessary. The system of public transport is really really good so you don't really need a rental car in my opinion. Um, the ADO buses will get you around really good. I will talk about them in a minute. And also there are collectivos. They will just, they are kind of buses they will drive certain routes. It's a weird system. In a minute more about that as well. As I said, if you are on a scooter, you will get to know the traffic really, really well. And it is quite chaotic as expected, to be honest. But yeah, they are honking a lot on the streets. That is mainly for letting everybody else know, hey, I'm here or hey, I'm going to overtake or uh, I'm going to take a turn or I did that already so you know I'm finished with that. So yeah, it's not like in Germany if someone honks at you that's like you did something wrong or to warn or something like that. But there it's more like form of communication. Not all the roads in Mexico are in a good condition but most of them were quite all right and you can drive quite easily. We were driving along a highway when we were in Tulum. That was kind of weird, but there were no signs that forbid that. Also, we were overtaken by the police and no one said something. So I guess it was okay. It didn't really felt like it. Where normally someone could cross the road in Mexico. I'm not sure if it works like that, but because sometimes you will try to cross the road and someone will be like, approaching and you will be like okay they are way too fast to stop or you can just cross and everybody will stop or just drive around you it's a little crazy but like i said a little as expected and nothing too wild in my opinion but i've been to southeast asia a lot so i'm quite used to wild traffic then as another option there is taxis and uber 
we realized and experienced that Uber isn't really welcomed by the taxi drivers. We had a Uber driver who actually told us, I'm not going to drop you off in front of the hotel, but a little further away so the taxi drivers won't see me because they don't like us. But still, yeah, Uber is available in a lot of places and easy, cheaper, but also taxis are quite reasonable in price. So that's all right as well. If you have seen the playlist, I already told you there was a private taxi that we rented um, in Valladolid to go up north to explore Rio Lagatos and Las Calaradas. And that was just $80 for the whole day and the driver was waiting there for us and he was a really, really nice guy. So yeah, $80, totally fine. Another option if you don't want to drive by yourself or you don't want to take the bus, you could rent transportation like that as well. To get to Isla Holbosch, uh, Isla Cozumel or Isla Mujeres, you obviously need a ferry. Most of them have websites where you can book them online. Pretty easy, just show up the other day and take the ferry just like that. And also, for my experience at least, it wasn't too cold. Sometimes the AC in the ferries will be pumped up like crazy. That was okay. They also have an upper deck so you can sit outside. Um, but yeah, then you have to put on a lot of sunscreen because you will be roasted. And as I told you, the ADO was the most used mean of transportation of them all because it is so easy and it is cheap. You can just book them online or you can get to the counter and buy a ticket there. Prices are absolutely fine. The buses are quite comfortable. You can watch Spanish movies and uh, up your language skills a little. And also they connect almost all the cities, especially in the Yucatan area. The connection is really good. So I would highly recommend to check them out if you want to get around and visit different cities. Last on the transportation list is Colectivos. They are kind of buses. It is just a white van that drives along the road. They have some routes they will take, but they are not really like stops. You will just be standing on the side of the road, be like waving and they will stop. You just hop in. Either you tell them where you want to go and they will stop there and drop you off or you just will make yourself recognized alongside the road and be like alto alto like stop or something like that. They will stop they will tell you a random price. I don't know how they calculate this price but it's crazy cheap and it's a really cool experience because you will sit there with mainly locals and you will drive around with them. Sometimes you get weird looks because there are not too many tourists in those collectivos, but it is fun. So do that, try it out, get involved. Next point, let's go. The next topic is going to be food and drinks. <sighs> Typical dishes for Mexico are like burritos, tapas, you get tequila for sure. They have different kinds of beers. Not all of them were good. Like I had a tomato beer. That was like the worst. I, I opened it, I tasted it and that's it. I didn't drink it at all. That was horrible. But there are mojitos and I like them a lot. So they make up for it a little bit. As we are on a vegan diet, we also tried that out. It is possible, sometimes a little harder to find. Happycow.com, or there also is an app, helps a lot with that. But yeah, vegetarian is possible in all places. Vegan, as I said, a little harder to find, but also possible. A little more expensive because most of those restaurants are a little more fancy-ish. Um, so that's an option as well. But I think Mexico is a place that is quite famous for meat. So if you are a meat eater, you will be happy everywhere, I guess. For accommodation, we chose Airbnbs again because I like that the most. 
to have my place and especially to be able to choose because we chose accommodations with kitchens most of the time because I really like to cook for myself or at least make my own breakfast and for that I like that more especially like in the Cancun area there are big resorts where you can go all inclusive and stuff like that. Playa del Carmen also has a really great variety of hostels because it's more like a party town but you can get an Airbnb everywhere uh, for the price range. We paid around $60 per night. More about that in the next video where I'm going to tell you all about the prices, how much we spent for what in Mexico. So if you don't want to miss out on that, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. If you're already there, maybe click the like button as well and then you will be around when the next video about the prices comes online. The people we met in Mexico were so nice and helpful and friendly. In Playa del Carmen you will be surrounded by police. More about that later in this video. Everybody involved in tourism was really really punctual which I as a German really liked. And also it might be helpful to know most prices are negotiable. So try that. I always love it because it brings you into conversation with locals as well. And most of them you can talk about a lot of topics. I think there are not much no-go's. Um, I spoke with some people about all the cartels and um, about the safety. That's a point later in this video. And that was not a problem at all and really interesting. The main activities of Mexico. I don't really know what the main activity is because they are just a lot. If you have seen the playlist I was diving quite a few times and I really would recommend that but more about that later in this video as well. And these cenotes are a highlight for sure. They are quite unique like they are also around in other places but Mexico is really well known for them and there is a great variety of them different kinds so you can explore a lot of them because each and every one will be different from the other ones so do as many as you can. <laughs> Another obvious point in Mexico is culture especially the Mayan culture. Visit different ruins there are a lot of them. I like the one in Tulum but also the Muyil one which is more like in a forest. There are more being explored every year and Chichen Itza obviously. That's a world wonder so no question about it. Go there. As another activity I really love island hopping. So going to Isla Mujeres and going to Isla Halbosch was very nice. We skipped on Cozumel but I would have liked to do that as well. It just is another vibe on these small islands and there's more and different stuff around it. Isla Halbosch if you're there in the right time you can see whale sharks. If you're there in the right time you can see manta rays. There is bioluminescence in the water. What else can you ask for? Yeah, maybe you could ask for Siancan, the lazy river, Rio Largatos, Las Colorados, Bacalas Lagoon. There is so much to do. You can go further into the country because then you will get out of the main tourist area which is like the Riviera. You can get a little further off the coastline into for example Merida or Valladolid. That's a little more local and for next time when I go to Mexico I plan on going more inland and more to the northern part because I guess there it is going to be more Mexican and less touristy as well and I always find that very interesting. As a don't do activity I would list the dolphins. There are places like on Isla Mujeres where you can swim with dolphins, take photos with them and ride them. They are held in captivity, they are being trained and not well treated so definitely skip on that. 
Time now for your latest weather forecast. We went to Mexico in December and there are only like three rainy days in December in average. We had none. We were there, like I said, for 26 days, not a single day of rain. I'm going to put the climate chart in here because I couldn't name it all and you always have to check your month. But yeah, it's mainly sunny, it's warm, especially Yucatan. Pfft. Yeah, we skipped winter in Germany for that. Next point, snorkeling and diving. I did different dives. There were the cenotes and that is, if you're certified, a must do. I would highly recommend El Pit or Angelita both of them have like this misty fog down there and that was a crazy experience. Whole different kind of diving, but also like those ojos, that blue when the sun beams just got into the water, that looks amazing. Also the car wash cenote in Tulum sounded really, really nice because there is a small crocodile in there and you can dive with him. What an experience. Another one was the bull shark dive. When you're there in the right time, there will be a lot of female bull sharks in the, on the coastline of Playa del Carmen. Absolutely amazing. I would do that over and over again. It was quite expensive, but such a great experience. Another one is the Musa, the underwater museum. I didn't have a great dive there, but I guess if you are there with the right group, it could be quite cool. The prices for a dive range from $50 up to $140 for the bull shark dive. Always depends a little on where you are and what kind of dive you want to do. And if you combine two dives in one day or if you just do a single dive. As I said, there's going to be a next video about how much I spent and also about how much I spent for dives. On the other hand, there is snorkeling. You can snorkel off the coast in many places. You also can go out with a boat and do excursions, but I guess in most circumstances, that's not really necessary. I'm not sure about, because we have been there in the right time, the whale shark and the manta ray snorkeling. I guess you have to go out for them by boat. But except from that, from the islands, you can have snorkeling off the shore. There are quite a lot of fishes around. I'm a little spoiled uh, in means of wildlife and with corals and such because I have been to really nice places to dive and snorkel, but still there are nice spots and if you haven't been around a lot, you will be blown out of the water. For this how to travel video, I am introducing a new category, which is rapid fire questions. So I'm going to have a bunch of different questions with just a snap answer. Let's Go. Most valuable item? Sunscreen for sure. Which style of clothes do you need? Beachwear. You have seen the climate charge. Item I missed the most? More sunscreen. Best place in my honest opinion? Hall Bosch for the wipes. Tulum for the options that you get there. Playa del Carmen for party. Most overrated place? Las Colorados. Language? Mostly Spanish, obviously, but you will get along with English quite well. Currency? Mexican pesos, about 20 Mexican pesos is one dollar by the time filming this. Who is it for? Hall wash for backpackers or everybody who needs to chill down. Valladolid for everyone who wants to check out culture because Chichen Itza is right around the corner. Playa del Carmen for party. Cancun for everybody who wants more big city life. Bacala if you want to get off the beaten path a little. And Merida if you want to have less tourists. Who is Mexico not suited for? Everybody who fancies wildlife a lot. For that, you should rather go to Costa Rica, which is going to be our next country. So make sure to hit the subscribe button down below to not miss out on those videos. And Mexico is not for you if you like it cold. Should you take guided tours or go on your own? I guess that depends a lot on your plans. You will save money when you go on your own. 
you will learn a lot if you take a guided tour and some places you can only do with a tour like Muyil, but you will learn a lot there. So maybe you can go to Chichen Itza on your own because you have learned about the Mayan culture a lot before. Internet and mobile data, absolutely easy. Got a SIM card with five gigabyte of data. You can get that almost everywhere. You can just go into a supermarket and set it up and you're good to go and you have connectivity almost everywhere and it's pretty good. Last and I guess a really important point is safety. For my personal experience I felt very safe everywhere and all the time. Still be smart and think about your decisions. Don't go into dark alleys with guys that you don't know or stuff like that. But apart from that, like I said, Playa del Carmen, there's a lot of police that feels a little weird because they are packed with weapons. And as I mentioned earlier, I had a conversation about that and I was told that nowadays the cartels lean more towards protecting the tourists and forbid like the smaller criminals um, to do any harm to the tourists because they recognize how valuable tourists are to them and to their business. So I guess that's another point that made me feel a little safer as well to know that you're not that victimized by those kind of people. To conclude all of that, Mexico worth a visit. You should go there. You should try all this out. If you have questions, if you are in the planning phase, just let me know. Leave it in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like down there as well. And as I said, we are going to continue with another video about how much we spend in Mexico. So maybe that helps you planning as well. So hit subscribe so you don't miss out. And after that, like I already told, there's going to be Costa Rica. Really pumped about that. A lot of wildlife. That's going to be crazy. I hope I see you in the next one. Until then, make sure your planning goes right. See you in the next one. Bye bye. Take care. See y'all. Good night and thank you for watching.